Today, I will show you how to install Dream Booth with Automatic 11.11. Hello, my friends, how are you doing? So here's a guide on how to set everything up and then also how to run the training for your first stable diffusion model. Now, the first thing, and that is super important, is you have to go to your web UI user bet, right click on that, show more options, edit. So you see this text file and under the command line arcs, you need to remove listen and you also need to remove the API info for paint hua so that this isn't sending to some other internal IP because otherwise the install is not going to work. Then of course you save that file and then you double click on it to open it up and go into automatic 11.11. Now in that on the side here, you have an extensions tab. Go to that, click on available and click on load from. There should be a link in here. And when that is loaded, you will see one of those is going to be Dream Booth. For me, it's not going to show here because I've already installed it, but look for the Dream Booth in that list and then on the right side here, click on install. Now this will take some time. It's going to run through the install process. You will see in the command window what is going on. After that has finished, close the command window and then double click on the web UI minus user.bat again to restart everything, load everything fresh. After you've done that, you will have a new tab here that is called Dream Booth and there you can train your models. And this is actually a rather quick process, of course, depending on what kind of GPU you have. I have a 3080 Ti in my laptop and it takes about half an hour to train a model. So the first thing you want to do here is to select a name here in the Create tab type anything you want for the name of the model, but something that you can remember that is descriptive. So you know afterwards what model that is. Then select the source checkpoint. That means the stable diffusion model. I selected the version 1.5 prudent EMA only model for that. I don't think it works with the 2.0 or 2.1 model yet but you can certainly try. And then below here, you select the sample method. I select Euler Ancestral because then afterwards I can create images with as little as 20 render steps. So experimenting becomes pretty fast and easy. Now, if you've done this, you click here on create. It takes a little while. And when it's finished, you will see that your render models up here with the correct name. When this is done, first, it is a good idea to click over here on training wizard person if you want to train a person and then fill the settings in as follows. You click here on parameters and in here you want to set the max training steps to 1100. It is very important here for the safe preview and checkpoint that you set the safe checkpoint frequency to zero and the safe preview frequency also to zero. Because I found when you set this to other values, so you get preview images here, the training will stop at that point and will not pick up from that point. You want to set the learning rate down here to, to zero dot and then five zeros and a one at the end. And very important when you scroll down here to advanced, you want to click on use eight bit Adam and also select under mix precision FP 16 from that pop down menu. Because without the eight bit Adam, I get errors and it wouldn't run. But with this, it ran without any problems. Next, we want to go here and click on concepts. And in there, you want to set your source folder for the input images. This is the images you want to train on that can be any kind of person or any kind of style, any kind of subject or object that you want to train. I have here a folder with 18 images of myself. You can see from different perspectives. So go to that folder, then click up here on Windows into that bar. So you have the address. Simply copy that with control C. You go in here to the data set directory and paste it in here with control V. For the classification data set directory, if you have images that you can use as sample images on as a comparison for the AI on what the images should look like, you can put that in there. Otherwise, you can also render these with the help of the AI. So down here where the prompts are, 
give sort of a description of what you want to have as the resulting image. In my case, I wrote portrait of Olivio Saricas, which is my full name written as one word person to indicate that this is about a person comma award winning photography. Then in the class prompt, the class prompt is used to create the images that are then used as a comparison against your photos. I wrote portrait of a beautiful person, comma, award winning photography. So very similar, but less specific on me. Also keep in mind where you put instant prompt, the word that you use in my case, Olivio Saricas should be a word that is not usually used in the English language, because otherwise it might conflict with words that are commonly used. The classification image negative prompt here, you can put some negative prompts to give you better results. In my case, I wrote in here ugly, disfigured, overlapping, blurred, old, child and wrinkles because I got a lot of old people photos and child photos. And of course, that wouldn't really mix with what I want to have here. So you can actually train the model specifically to what you want to have or train it more open for different applications. Then down here in the image generation, the total number of class images that is important. And that should be about 10 times the images you put in. I'm using 18 photos of myself. So I'm creating 180 images. So that means when the AI training starts, it's first going to create 180 AI images using the class prompt you have written up here. And then afterwards, the training is starting. You can leave the other settings as they are. And then we click here on training and wait until it is finished. After this finished, you will find your model up here in the list because this will automatically be put in the model stable diffusion folder. You can simply write your prompt, the negative prompt and use everything as usual. The only thing you need to do is to use your word in here. In my case, my full name and surname so that the AI knows you want to render an image of yourself or whatever you have trained on. Also, sadly, I found that this will give you only very good results when you use style of Greg Rukowski, comma, Mucha, sometimes even art term on top of that, because then the results will just look a lot more accurate and a lot more painterly. And of course, if you don't want to have that right prize winning photography of art winning photography, something like that. So you get a more photographic result. And that's how easy training with Dream Booth is. Show me your results in the Discord group or in my Facebook group. Looking forward to see that. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.